Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney, much more casual than you normally see me, and I also don't have any of my lights on right now. So I am slowing, just needed a, a nice slow time after getting back from Florida and um, we went on a little vacation. February has just been a crazy month work-wise and um, yeah, just needed a little slowdown so I thought I would take you guys along with me. Um, so this is a vlog over um, Saturday and then yesterday, Monday. Um, I didn't do any vlogging on Sunday because I was doing all my tax preparation. But I made the new Cashmerette Kimball Bomber that is part of their club, their new pattern club, and it is so good. So I'm not going to chat at you too much. I'm going to just go to the vlog. <laughs> okay, guys, I hope you enjoy it, and I will see you again on Friday. Hello, everyone. Okay, I thought it'd be fun to do a vlog this week, mostly because, um, well, a few things. February was super busy. <laughs> I think I mentioned I spent a lot of, um, oh, still up February, but I spent a lot of time catching up from, um, I also have very poofy hair today, catching up from being sick and then trying to work ahead for being gone in Florida. So by the time I got to Florida, let's see, I'm filming this on Saturday, the 26th, and um, it'll probably be all weekend, but uh, filming this today on the 26th, and we got back from Florida on Tuesday, on the 22nd. So we were in Florida from the 16th to the 22nd, which was lovely. I sat on the beach and read um, the next Bridgerton novel, and <laughs> which is just fluff, but it was just really good to relax. I mean, we did other stuff. We went kayaking. Uh, my kids and husband and dad played a lot of pickleball and... Um, it was an art show on the island that my mom and I and her best friend went. My parents' best friends own a place down on Sanibel, so um, they're always down there when we're, when my parents, who just rent, um, are down there. So it's always nice to get to see them because they were like second parents. They've got a daughter that's uh, my age and a son that's three years older, um, but we grew up doing everything together. So it's always nice to get to see them. Um, and they have a boat down there and we went for a boat ride and it was just a really lovely vacation. But now that we are back, um, I'm like easing back into things <laughs> work. I definitely miss my sewing room, but I'm just really looking forward to slowing down and, um, yeah, as we get into March, do some sewing for myself and for my daughter. Um, obviously the spring capsule will be coming out on March 9th and I have no idea how much sewing I'm going to have for that. I don't think I'm going to have a lot. Um, I kind of am thinking I know what my color palette ish might be. I want to wait and see what the mod the um capsules color palette is a lot of times she releases that early too before the actual capsule so i'm hoping that'll come out soon um but anyway i kind of am thinking the colors that i kind of want to play around with so um yeah we'll see what happens there um okay so i've got a few things here that i want to show you so while we were well right before we left actually so it's been i've had these here for a little bit my minerva order came so these are the <laughs> this is the order that i placed when i was sick and doing some shopping but I bought some stuff for my daughter so I got her um and again Minerva usually arrives about a week after it ships um for me in the UK to Indiana um and their shipping is um free if you spend over I think it's 50 British pounds I think which I almost always do <clears throat> but anyway they were had been having a sale um it's like January 29th it was like a flash sale 20% off or something like that. And I bought a few things for my daughter. I bought the Friday Pattern Company Adrian Blouse, which is this, uh, a knit pattern. <clears throat> I have a few uh, viscose knits that I'm going to use for this for her. But I mean, there's the line drawing. I mean, you guys have seen this. It's kind of a cult classic. Um, but I think she's she's going to love that. And I think I'm going to obviously make myself some as well. So I've got that one for her. And then I bought, this is the Thea Boho sleeve shirt from Liberty Fabrics. And I know that this is a reprint of, I think, a Vogue pattern, but the Vogue pattern is now um, out of print. But I, she loves these sleeves, and I, they're just very interesting. And there's a few different interesting color choices. I will never, I don't think we'll ever make those sleeves, but definitely these sleeves. Um, but there's a few different color options. So there's just like a collar stand, like just a collar stand. And then there's this little collar. Can you see that's got like the little bow underneath it? She will love that one. And then just the regular collar. And then there's a collar that has like um, kind of ruffles around it. Can you see that very well? 
I know it's kind of hard to see. And then just obviously the regular collar. So um, I finished her vest, that vest that I was knitting for her. Um, got that blocked this week. Um, finished it when we were in Florida. And um, so we're look, she's looking forward to having some big sleeved, some more big sleeved shirts to wear underneath that. She also has a, she's really coming out of her shell. Has a lot of ideas for some pants that she wants and everything else. You're probably going to see her on the channel quite a bit more. But the fabrics that I bought for her, I, because I knew, backstory, my daughter has, um, follows this um, channel on YouTube called Snake Discovery. And it is a husband and wife and they are, um, I mean, kind of, I don't know what you call, like a zoologist, but kind of um, with specialties in reptiles. And they have a facility they just opened in Wisconsin. Anyway, my daughter loves the channel and loves snakes. She loves drawing snakes. She loves talking about snakes. My husband is terrified of snakes, so she will never own a snake while she lives under our roof. But um, I mean, my husband is terrified of snakes. So it's just so funny that she's so into them. But I knew that she would love this fabric. So I bought her the Cobra Corsage. This is the Lady McElroy Cobra Cro Cro Cobra corsage with the Chantilly background. So this is a little warm um, for her white, but I think it'll be fine. But it's got the snakes and the bugs and she loves this. This one was her favorite when I picked this one out. And I bought, um, I think I've got two and a half meters, maybe two meters, two and a half meters, enough for a shirt. I think I can get like this one out of it. Let's see, Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be able to get this out of what I've got here. Um, anyway, so this is going to be a shirt. And again, this is the corporate corsage. And I know that this comes in a few different colorways, which might be kind of fun. But I thought this one me, she does not wear dark colors well. So the lighter color was was definitely the preference. So yeah, I bought enough. Oh, I have it right here. I can tell you exactly. Two, two meters I bought of this. So there we've got that one for her. And then I bought this one for her too, also on the cotton lawn. This is the Anaconda Antithesis, which also has snakes, but it has more, um, less bugs, more, although there are some, more flowers. And this is the, um, the well, the blue background, but this like dusty blue looks really good on her. And I bought, I think I got three meters of this one. Yeah, three meters of this one to do a dress. And that final, um, let me see if I can find it. The final Vogue pattern, the one that they had accidentally sent in error. And they sent me the wrong one. They sent me the correct one, and it's this Vogue 9299. So this is the one that I had ordered, and they sent me that bodysuit one inadvertently. But they sent me this one for free. But she thinks that she might like one of these dress versions with, like, the big sleeve. So maybe, like, view, well, like, view D, I guess. I don't know, because they've got, I guess these are more tunics, but because there's like slits and stuff, but I think you could definitely sew those down and um, make it make it a dress, which is what she's thinking that she would really like. She loves this wide belt. She loves this. So we would make hers a dress. So I think I could just alter the sides a little bit and make it less tunic. Yeah, because you're looking at the line drawings. It looks like there's some really um, big slits that go up that, but I think I could, you know, figure that out enough. So yeah, so she's thinking beauty of the Anaconda Antithesis. So those are two that we're kind of working on. Um, also her Jessica blazer. I've got, um, I'm making the Jessica blazer with a friend of mine. Uh, my friend Marissa, she is so help me on Instagram. And um, she's been wanting to make the Jessica blazer. So she bought the, all the stuff and um, is going to you know, just come over periodically and we're going to kind of make that together. I can't do a sew along on that pattern though, because there is a class that's available that Closet Core sells. So I'm, yeah, I can't do a class or anything on the Jessica, but I am going to be showing some progress shots. I think over on Minerva, because it's Minerva fabric that I'm using, but I will be working on the Jessica because she really wants that in her closet, probably before I do any of that other stuff for her. So the Jessica will be the next thing I make for her. Um, but I have finished that sweater vest. And so I think um, so you're seeing this on Tuesday. I think on Friday, maybe I'll put up a what I've been knitting video, which will be um, a sweater for her, a sweater for me, and then that sweater vest for her, um, which is what I have made so far this year. I've been very prolific in my knitting this year, which is typical. Usually this time of year, I'm very pro prolific. And then like May hits and then there's nothing until like October. <laughs> 
but um you know it's just kind of it is what it is but um I've got some socks that I'm knitting right now and then I'm going to start my um sweater for the spirit wear sweater that I'm going to do for my son's um tech hounds because their competition season starts next weekend okay so the other thing that I'm going to work on I don't know if you guys have seen but cashmerette just released their um cashmerette club which is uh, there's a few different tiers um through their website but I think I joined the nine dollar tier which just gets you a pattern every month and access to their clubhouse um but I think that there are up the other tiers where you can take some of her fitting classes and um like all sorts of stuff like I think it gets really in detail which is fantastic because in my opinion she is um one of the the best when it comes to fitting especially when it comes to fitting a non-straight body something with curves <laughs> large bust yeah which is most of us and now that she's extended her size range everything is wonderful but anyway i joined that and the first pattern is the kimball bomber jacket so i have printed it out and um also included in the um the tier that i'm on at least um and i'm sure the ones above there are a couple more that are above my tier but um you uh she gave out a coupon for 20 percent off core um fabric store which is the closet core patterns sister brand the core patterns and i for fabric you know they had a whole bunch of suggestions of what you could make this um, bomber jacket with but i bought this now obviously the pink is not in my color palette but the navy is as is the mustard and then there's a little bit of this like bright turquoisey blue, which is also in my color palette. Pink is not, but I thought, you know, it'll be fine. Like I, I'm really thinking for my spring wardrobe, I'm going to keep the um, navy and cream as kind of my dark and my light neutral. And then I think I want to do some mustard, like um, mustardy yellow colors, because I have a lot. I bought quite a few um, pieces of fabric and then putting in some tangerine slash coral like a little like my, my lighter orange um not to say I won't be wearing brighter orange but my lighter kind of shades of orange the peaches corals tangerine kind of colors that are my color card and um with a little bit of turquoise I think that might be kind of cool but anyway yeah so this I think will kind of this this will you know slide in there because I've got my upland trousers that are in kind of that peach color I don't know. Could that pull off? I don't know. I'll have to make this up and see. But I bought this from Core Patterns because, or Core Fabric um, because, look, it's got little llamas. And I just think this is like a, a woven jacquard. It was expensive. It was like, I mean, it's not going to say on here. It's a poly cotton. Um, and I got two and a half yards, which is what I need for the jacket. But um, it's, I mean, it's a woven. Let me show you the back. It's a, a heavier weight. So see, it's it's like the pattern is woven in there. I just think it's so cool. And she had a few different uh, prints and stuff with this jacquard. Again, it was not in an inexpensive. It was like thirty bucks a yard or something. Um, so even at the twenty percent off, it was not inexpensive. But I'd been eyeing it, uh, and I had not bought anything from Core Fabrics yet. I just hadn't had a opportunity to. And um, she's got some really good stuff on sale too right now. But anyway, I bought this for the body of the jacket, the sleeves. I'm just going to do it all. I don't think I'm going to quilt my sleeves. Um, just do it all in one fabric. It's an unlined, well, maybe I will quilt the sleeves because the it's unlined jacket, but she does have lining for the sleeves for ease of putting it on. But the she has you finishing off the inside seams with um, of the body of the jacket with, I think, bias tape binding it. But I also bought from Core Fabrics because my entire order was 20% off, but there was a remnant of um, Navy Ponty that she just had a half of a, me half of a yard. She actually sells in yards, even though she's Canadian. Half of a yard of this Navy Ponty, which is perfect for my, um, the collar and the um, cuff and the bottom of the jacket. So I grabbed some of that. Just the very last of that so that I could, and I was also curious to see the weight of her. It's a thinner Ponty. Um, so I don't know that like the Parker Ponty pants would be good for that, this weight of Ponty, but it's going to be perfect for the cuffs and everything on this jacket. 
So I also want to get that cut out and get that made up. Because I think this would be a really fun spring jacket. And I think I could wear like my bright orange shirt and stuff underneath that, even though it doesn't, even though it's not pink. Um, I think we can kind of push the envelope on that a little. I love bright color. And I'm not completely certain that what my color palette's going to be for the spring. I think it will definitely include, though, that yellow ochre color. Um, because, again, I've got a couple of, I'm staring at them, a couple of chalets that I purchased um, when I was going through that whole big fabric shopping spree at the after Christmas. <laughs> that being said, I also spent my 20% off coupon, birthday coupon at StyleMaker Fabrics. I bought mostly things from their salvage yard. Um, they had a couple of CU at six fabrics that were just like the end, the salvage end. And um, I'm thinking, I love the Stanton hoodie. I just really love the cashmere at Stanton hoodie. I kind of want to make the actual um, zip up hoodie. I've made the, just the regular sweatshirt with the hood. I've taken the hood off and just done a neckband for a sweatshirt. And I kind of would like to make the actual, um, hoodie with the, well, the actual jacket, I guess, um, of that pattern. And so I bought some See You at Six French Terries that were in the selvage yard that also had the matching ribbing in there. And I even bought on, I guess two of them. One of them wasn't on sale. One of them I had to buy full. I bought two sets and it was like a patterned French Terry uh, with the solid French Terry that goes with it. And then the ribbing of those six fabrics, I think, I think five of them were on the selvage yard. So anyway, so I grabbed those um, and I'm going to make a jacket out of one of them with matching shorts because I think I only have like a yard of the solid, um, at least of one of them. I can't remember how much I have of the got of the other because I just had to buy what, what was there. But one of them is definitely going to just be a pair of um, French Terry shorts and I'm loving my summer key shorts that I grabbed uh, or that I made up in the um, cotton French terry for, that went with my terra tunic. Um, so anyway, I may make that one up again. Those just work really well in knits. They're very comfortable. I wore them a lot when we were in Florida. <laughs> so anyway, this is kind of what I'm thinking. So I thought that this little vlog might be nice. Um, I'm just going to kind of do a little bit of sewing this weekend. I do have to, my husband informed me I need to get all of my tax documents and stuff before Tom gets to tree all rounded up this weekend because we have to get those turned into the account. And I think he wants to do that by Sunday night. Um, so I've got to get all that wrapped up, which is not fun, but um, I think I'm just going to do some sewing probably on this Kemble jacket and then a little bit, mostly I think what you're going to see, I just wanted to show you the other stuff, but mostly I think it's going to be the Kemble jacket and then working on um, my daughter's Jessica because my friend Marissa is coming over next week and the thought was to have everything cut out and there's so many pieces to that pattern and to have all of the interfacings fused where they need to go. Um, yeah, and I can talk a little bit more about how I like to do that without, you know, I don't think I'm infringing on the class there, but I like to cut out the interfacing first on the Jessica. This will be my third one that I've made. Cut out the interfacing first because there's quite a few pieces that it's just the interfacing for like the hem pieces. Um, so then as I'm cutting out the actual body of the jacket, you know, once I get the sleeve pieces cut out, I immediately go over and just fuse the um, interfacing to them. It just makes life go a little bit easier. <laughs> um, you know, otherwise you're just fusing forever. It just breaks it up a little bit because there's so many pieces. I mean, it all is beautiful in the end, but it's just a lot of pieces. So um, anyway, that's kind of what I'm thinking I would like to work on this weekend. Get a Kimball jacket sewn up, and this weekend and into Monday probably, but get the Kimball sewn up and then also get um, my daughter's Jessica to the point where all the pieces are cut out and fused. And even if I don't get to the lining yet, that's fine, I think. Because um, actually I can kind of wait on the lining um, if I want to break things up into chunks a little bit more. And then that should get me to the point where when Marissa's here next week, we can then talk about um, really building up the fronts. That's where a lot of the fanciness comes um, into the jacket. So, okay, I've been blabbing at you for 18 minutes. I'm going to stop and I'm going to get my Kimball cut out and I will check back in. I am finished and I love this thing. Um, let me just pick up the pants here. <laughs> Okay, so I will obviously do a video on this. Oh my gosh, look at this fabric. Look at my llamas. 
I'm actually pretty happy with how this kind of looks like a Christmas tree right through there. I mean, I probably won't ever wear this zipped up, but everything does match up really nicely in that case. Um, I took a length off. I've got my little zippered pockets here, which are still, um, I've got to tack those in place with the facings. That's the last thing I need to do. So I took, I made the size 10. I just made a straight size 10 because normally I grade out from a 10 to a 12 at the waist. But since this is a bomber jacket, I just did a straight size 10. I figured there was enough ease in the waist and I think it's fine. Um, I did take an inch out of the body, which makes my pockets a little bit higher because I wanted the same size pockets. Um, so it does make them a little bit higher, but that is honestly the, just the nature of the beast with me with crop jackets, because in order to have <laughs> the space I need for my hands, um, you know, but to, okay. So saying that, I think if I had an extra inch, I think I would just have a little bit more blue sawn. I think I could have gotten away without having taken any length out. Um, the same with the sleeves. I took an inch out of the sleeves because that's what I do with most of her patterns, um, just because I'm short. And, you know, there is definitely, you know, when they're all down, there's definitely room for it to be like a little blue saw. But I think if I had left a lot of that length in, it would have been fine. So there is the back. My T-shirt's also kind of hanging out. I'm going to tuck it under there. So there's the back. I'm really happy with the placement on the back. So this is an unlined jacket. Uh, my sleeves are quilted. Can you see? Oh, there you go. I did them with a kind of an ochre colored top stitching. So I'm like, well, if I'm going to, oh God, I tell you what, look at that. I have, <laughs> this was the raveliest fabric. I look, you look at it and it just starts to unravel. It is very loosely woven. Um, so that's just a little piece that got caught in the stitching. I'll pull that out. Um, so, which is why I went ahead and finished it today. Cause I didn't want it to even sit overnight. I was afraid it would just unravel away. So I've got pins here where I'm just going to tack the pocket into place in there. So it's got these nice little fit facings that finish off. And then the sleeves, I didn't put any batting in between the fabric and the lining just because I didn't want too much bulk. But you quilt the lining to the sleeve and then it just gets sewn in for normal. I didn't, I mean, she has, yeah, tells you how to do like binding and stuff like that for the seams. I just, honestly, I was afraid that because this is such ravelly fabric that any like trying to bind them was going to be a bit of a nightmare. And it's kind of not super thick, but I mean, it's two layers kind of woven. And um, I was a little worried that it would be thick and that it, yeah, kind of shifty. So I just went ahead and finished things off with my serger. And you know, it's, it's pretty busy on the inside because of the back of the fabric is so busy. So I, I really don't mind it. And I top stitched my um, seam allowance down around the edge and also at the bottom, I which wasn't part of the instructions, but I also top stitched around the whole body, basically top stitching that seam allowance up that I surged. So I love this. I mean, this is going to be like the jacket this spring. Okay, so it is now 530. I don't even know when I came down here. Um, I People were coming and going. It's Saturday, so my family's home. Um, but it felt, and I didn't feel bad about being down here on a Saturday because we were all just together <laughs> in long vacation. So um, anyway, uh, but I, I, I mean, I love it. I'm so happy with my pattern placement on the back. My little llamas down here. I guess that's what those are. Maybe those are birds. Are those like an ostrich or an emu or something? I don't know. But these are llamas, I think. Anyway, very pleased with how the print placement came out. Got my little tag in there. I mean, I just feel like I'm going to wear this all spring. Okay. So <laughs> that's all I've got for Saturday. Um, yeah, it was just kind of nice to be down here all day doing nothing but working on this jacket, even though the fabric was super ravelly. And even though I was so over the quilting, by the time my sleeves were done, my son was in here. I just had a James Bond movie on just to have background noise, one I'd already seen. And he's seen it as well, but he was sitting in here watching it again in my filming chair. And I, he was like, why are you grumbling so much? I'm like, I, so, I'm not a quilter. I'm just not a quilter. I don't have the patience for it. Uh, and you qu quilt like big rectangles of fabric and then you cut the sleeves out. Um, 
and I was sewing, I wanted to sew the sleeve in because everything was unraveling before my eyes to get everything all, you know, surged and finished off. So I think we made it without any disasters. So that's my new jacket. Okay, I think I'll probably come back on here tomorrow and um, I'd really like to get, I do need to do, I didn't do any tax stuff. I do need to do that tomorrow. If I don't come back tomorrow, I will definitely come back on Monday um, to get my daughter's Jessica all cut out and interfaced. So I'll kind of talk you through that as well. All right, thanks for spending today with me. I will be back either tomorrow or Monday. Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, so um, I did not come on here yesterday um, because <laughs> I, um, I'm also in horrible need of a shower, but I, uh, we went to church and then came home and I spent a really long time getting my tax law documents <laughs> together. And after that, I was going to come down and clean my sewing room. But to be honest, all the wind was out of my sails, um, by then. So it was sunny, it was cold, but sunny. So we went in for a walk. Um, yeah, and I just kind of put, you know, did a little knitting. I've got a pair of socks cast on right now, um, because I'm going to be working on my sweater at my son's. Um, competitions, but that the goal of that is just to be working on them while we're at the competitions um, to see how I can, I'll probably have to do a little outside of that, but um, anyway, that's kind of what yesterday was. So today, I, I wanted to show you, I got three things um, in the mail yesterday, and I just wanted to show them to you really quickly, and um, I'm going to clean my sewing room, and then I want to, I'll probably take a shower, because <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm in need of a shower, and then i um, I'm gonna prep the Jessica. I'm gonna get it all cut out um, for my daughter, um, get the pieces all fused so that that's all ready to go when I meet with my friend Marissa on Thursday. So that's kind of the thing. Okay, I just wanna show you these real quick. So I received a gift certificate, um, an Amazon gift certificate, gift certificate from my brother-in-law for my birthday. And so I went on and was kind of looking. I didn't wanna load it on to my Amazon account because otherwise it would just get spent on like the random stuff that we buy, you know, the household things or you know, the stuff that like we need that we normally get from Amazon. So um, I wanted to have a plan before I went in. So I decided to purchase, well, I went on because I decided I really, I decided I did want this book. This is the Cashmere Ahead of the Curve um, book. Now the patterns in here are the original size, I shouldn't say the original, it may go up to the 32. Her original size range was like a size, a U.S. size 12 to a size 30. And then she went up, in her newest size range, she went up to a size 32 and down to a size 0. I know the 0 to, you know, through the 12 is not in here. But now I can't remember. Well, there's a size chart in here somewhere. Uh, oh, yeah, this one does go up to the size 32. So this goes from the size 12 to the size 32. Um, I think there's five patterns in here. I was looking through it last night. But the real reason I wanted this book, because um, I can kind of fudge into a size 12. Um, I'm like a 10, a 10 with like a size 12 waist. So um, actually a little bigger than a size 12 waist right now. But <laughs> I'm a 10 with a GH cup um, with most of her patterns. And usually her pants patterns are a little big on me, because the original ones, because the hip was 42. Um, her smallest hip is a 42 used to be, and, um, my hip is, well, the moment it's a 40, but it goes anywhere from a 38 to a 40, depending on my weight at the time. <laughs> so, um, I have not really, I've not made any of her pants, but the pants that are in this one are elastic back. And, um, I think that, you know, even making them in the size 12 might be kind of fun. But the real reason I bought this book is because for the fitting. So she... Um, her fitting, I just love the way she does fitting and the way she describes things. And she walks you through each pattern, how to do full bust adjustments, how to do, um, you know, basic, it's common fit adjustments if you have a curvier figure that you may need to do. Um, but she also covers small bust adjustments because she has the larger cup size in her patterns. She covers how to do small bust adjustments in addition to, if you need to do an additional full bust adjustment, um, making shoulders narrower or wider. Um, if you get the um, the high round back, the, she has an adjustment on for that. Um, and then a lot of stuff with the uh, pants as well, like different full belly adjustments, 
um, and how to do that depending on the type of belly you have, like where you carry your weight on your belly, which I found fascinating and um, like different things with the crotch, like really easy things. But that's the real reason I wanted this book because her fitting, again, is wonderful. I've taken her craftsy class and it was phenomenal. Um, and I know that she offers some classes on her website as well. Um, just full bicep adjustments, full calf adjustments, which actually I need. Um, but anyway, that's the real reason I bought this book. But the patterns in here are really great as well. And I may end up making those. We'll have to see. And then because um, I cast on, and I'll show you my socks that I just cast on. Uh, I'm doing the Hermione pattern. It was on Ravelry. It's a free one. It was like what, the most popular one. And I think some of you suggested that one to me as well. But I am using the um, hand the um, hand dyed yarn, two yarns. I have a contrasting color and then a fun, like a variegated color um, for a pair of socks that Carol sent me. And um, I am finally cast on those socks. So I've kind of gotten, I don't know, like into a little bit of a groove. Socks are so wonderful because they're an easy project to travel with, carry around. But I was looking at some knitting pattern books that were on Amazon as well and decided to go with this 52 weeks of socks because I thought it would just be fun. You know, as I've got a ton of like single skeins of fingering weight that I had bought um, there for a while when I go on vacation and we'd go anywhere where there'd be like a yarn shop, I would just buy like, you know, a, a skein of fingering weight yarn. Um, so I thought having a socks from different places that we visit would be fun. Um, and then I kind of got off socks. So, <laughs> so I have a lot of yarn. <laughs> But um, yeah, so I grabbed this one. It's a really beautiful book and I'm excited to um, try some different things. I mean, just because why not? So I've just really been into knitting. So this is, I grabbed this one. And then also while I was on there, um, I grabbed Mastering Color Knitting, which also has some patterns in it. But I, this scares me, color, <laughs> stranded color work. And I mean, I've done a little bit of it. Um and a couple of things, but doing like beautiful stranded color work. I mean, like, look at that blanket on the back. Is that not amazing? This is like a um, sampler blanket doing intarsia. So I've never done intarsia. I've never done double knitting. I've, um, gosh, what else is in here? I've just done a little bit of stranded color work, but I've not done like anything like Fair Isle or any of that sort of thing. Yeah, reversible two-color double knitting is in here. Anyway, there's some really cool patterns. And it scares me, which is why I want to do it. So I grabbed that book as well. So that was a fun um, meal day yesterday to get all three of those books. I love a good sewing and or knitting book. They're just so pretty. And books make me happy. So <laughs> that's what I spent my gift card on for my birthday. That was fun. Okay, I am going to, um, kind of just looking around at my sewing room. It is a mess. Um, I've got those new fabrics that came in for my daughter that I showed you that I want to serge the um, ends on those so I can get those washed so that they're ready to get made up. I have like clean fabric that has been washed that's just like sitting in a couple of piles that needs to be sorted and put where it needs to go. Um, I've got patterns on the floor um that need to be put away and and then just like a general um shop vac vacuuming situation needs to happen as well and probably some dusting um i'm sure some dusting so that is what i'm gonna do now and then i'm gonna wait and take a shower that's why i'm kind of scrubby at the moment <laughs> because i'm like well i'm not gonna get all dusty and nasty and then you know after taking a shower so that's what I'm going to do. It's Monday. My kids are at school. Gidget's at the groomer. She's got a spa day today. Um, she probably won't need to be picked up until later this afternoon. And my husband's here and he's working. Um, but it's pretty nice out. It's only 30 degrees right now, but it is also only nine o'clock in the morning. Um, but it's really sunny. So um, I'm hoping that maybe we can get a walk in today as well. So I will, I'll do a quick before <laughs> so you can see my shame and then we'll do an after. And it will be like a really quick, you know, it'll seem so quick with video editing when in fact this will probably take me a few hours. So <laughs> let's get going.
she's clean and picked up even this little corner over here. Oh, look at my patterns. The machines have been cleaned and oiled. <sighs> Does anyone else feel so much lighter? That's a whole bunch of roving in that bag, as is that whole thing is filled with roving for my new spinning wheel that my friend Jenny currently has and is using. <laughs> Guys, yay! Okay, I'm also going to show you, although I didn't show you before, of the um, cutting area, but um, it looks pretty good too. Okay, I mean, I do have, that's my son's shoemaking box that's up there. We need to get those finished. Um, got a whole bunch of fabric put away. And there's my daughter's Jessica waiting. Yay. Okay. I'm a hot, sweaty mess. <laughs> okay, it is 1.30. So that took me, it was probably about 9.30 when I got started, oh, like 9.25, 9.30. So four hours it took me. I did take a lunch break. Um, I had a, you know, about halfway through to eat. Um, look how clean everything is. But, uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm beat. So I'm going to go take a shower and get kind of cleaned up. I'm not sure. It's only 1.30, so I doubt I get called to go pick up Digit for another few hours. Probably 3.30, 4, somewhere around there. Um, so I'm going to go upstairs, take a shower, and then I'm going to treat my wool, my daughter's wool. Um, I had someone ask me how I treat like wool coating, um, which would go to the dry cleaners in an extreme case, although those type of items like a blazer don't need to be cleaned that often. Um, I don't take my fabric yardage to the dry cleaner. I literally stick it in a dryer with a damp bath towel and let it steam treat that way. That just kind of shrinks things up just a little bit. Um, it doesn't felt anything. I know people have been have worried about that before. It doesn't do any felting. It just kind of, it was. it's the same as if I were just to take a really steamy iron and hit the entire yardage with it, um, which I'll do after, <laughs> just to iron it flat after it comes out of the dryer. So that is what I'm gonna do while I'm showering, um, treat that. And then I'm gonna get this Jessica cut out infused and, and then I'm going to feel very productive with my day. I still need to edit and upload this video, but I don't think that'll take very long. <laughs> All right, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, everything has been cut and fused and marked. I say everything. The lining's still not been cut out, but I am beat. <laughs> I just also wanted to point out, um, when you're doing the interfacing for anything that is like stops in the body of the garment, like the sleeve hems or the back hem or um, the top of the sleeve up there. I pink those edges um, instead of cutting them straight just because it softens that so you don't get a line through on the right side. I think she says that in the instructions. Um, I will follow the instructions on this pattern um, because it's so involved, but for this part, I've made this um, jacket a couple of times now, so I just I kind of knew what I was doing this part. Um, but yeah, all the body of the coat all the interfacing is cut out, it is all fused, and everything is marked. All the pattern markings have been transferred. I'm exhausted. <laughs> okay guys, I'm gonna call it a night. I'm so tired. My legs, feet, and back are all really tired because I have been um, standing on carpet floors all day. <laughs> um, a lot of times when I'm down here like cutting out and stuff, I'm at least sitting some of the part to sew. But um, today, because I was cleaning, doing all that. And then that blazer, I knew that this was going to be, in fact, I'm kind of surprised I got it all done today, to be honest, and to, on top of cleaning my sewing room, but getting all of those pieces cut out and then everything fused because you have to stand here forever for, you know, hold it, you know, 15 seconds, then 15 seconds when you're pressing the interfacing. It just takes a really long time. And there's so many pieces that get interfacing and a couple of different kinds of interfacing, the net interfacing, was sticking to the bottom of my iron. Um, it was just it's just lightweight, and so the glue was coming up to the top. So I had to dig out my pressing cloth, which is fine. Um, that worked fine once I did that. Um, but yeah, it is seven o'clock. I had been working on this since about two thirty, probably. Um, now I did stop for to go get the dog who was snoring. I don't think you're able to see her. 
she's so tired. She's always exhausted after grooming. <laughs> so I went and picked up the dog and then um, made dinner. And um, I had something in the crock pot. Making dinner didn't take long. But we ate dinner together. And then I came back down here and worked some more. So it's done. Now I'm the lining will probably cut out super quickly. But I still I have to like iron it. You can actually see it right there next to the Bernina, the lining. Oh, I'm never good at that right there. <laughs> right there. Um, the lining has been laundered. It just needs to be ironed. Um, and there's a whole bunch that I bought that in Chicago. So I just, I may just like, you know, tear off a certain amount of the yardage so I don't have to iron everything and just iron what I need. But that shouldn't take me very long. So I think I'm going to go ahead and get the body of the jacket all made up. And then I guess I'll probably, I will need to cut out the pocket pieces. Oh, we'll tackle that another day. <laughs> I'm not even sure I'm, that it's the next thing I'm going to sew. Um, because I have a pattern release for a new pattern for Love Notions. It'll be coming out soon. I wasn't a tester for it. But because I'm an ambassador, I get access to the pattern before it comes out. So I can make one up for the release. Um, so I've got that, which I'm anticipating coming up here soon. And I'm also in the middle of a pattern test for Itch to Stitch. So um, I have two things for them that I need to get done. So I don't know. I've got a free, not a free day, but I've got a sewing day tomorrow, basically. So I don't know if, yeah, I don't know what I'll get done. But anyway, I'll quit jabbing. I feel like this is going to be a very long video. Thank you for following along with me on my Saturday and Monday. <laughs> Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this little very casual vlog. It felt good just to be sit here and chat with you guys as I got some stuff done. Um, and I will see you on Friday, I think, for uh, what I've been knitting um, video. I'm going to show, show you guys the two sweaters that I've made and my sweater vest. I think that'll be Friday's video. So until then, <laughs> hope you guys have a good one and I will see you on Friday. <laughs>